mother is trying to be very patient with her little offspring. Her babies are just a few days old and hungry too. As the baby deer grow older, they lose their spots entirely. These animals tame very easily and are very graceful pets, but there's apparently no limit to their appetite. As a weapon of defense, they rely almost entirely on their great speed and alertness, and they have to be on the lookout for venison as an important source of food in many places for man and the larger meat-eating animals. Here's a male deer who eats a half pack of cigarettes at a sitting, gets a cough, some tobacco. It's not only kind to the throat, try this in your blindfold test. Its antlers are just growing. When full grown, they shed and are then renewed, a brand new every year. One of these days, this raccoon is going to watch a college on earth the up to. A bosom pal. Stop tickling. A pickpocket. He's bound to satisfy that sweet tooth of his, persistent little fellow. Could he clean up in the subway? He won't be still for even a second. There you are, now he's happy. The raccoon is found all over North America. His amusing ways, a thousand and one mischievous antics, make him a most desirable pet. Wonder if these selected eggs are all they're cracked up to be. The raccoon is one of the fussiest of animals when it comes to food. He insists on washing his food before eating it. Of course, if there's no water available, don't think he's going to fast. He loves his victuals too much for that. But he does enjoy cleanliness. This egg has more resistance than any we've ever seen. Maybe it's an Easter egg or a hard boil. It's taking a lot of punishment for an egg. Uh, it's the genuine, the real thing. Head or tail of it. Its long tail is general welfare, getting about and for seizing and grasping. King is very fond of sweets and bananas especially. Hope it peels to them. They're accustomed to like nests. These aren't around. Mexico, Central America, and South America. The Coata Mundi, a tropical animal distinguished by its long, flexible snoot. A restless, active, nosy little fellow, related to the raccoon, but with a longer body and tail. He has the reputation of being quite a fighter for one so small, but in his milder moments consumes large quantities of bananas. Which is the thumb? Thumb fun. Talking about creatures with long snoots, take the anteater. This animal is well mostly long claws, like jimmies for prying open logs, and the rough nests of termites. It's marked, one of the ugly scene is titled, All Wrapped Up in Each Other. Getting a new twist on life. Hold steady. The main bird in the world is the Camaran, a seabird distinguished by a sack under its beak. They have become the emblem of gluttony and devour unbelievably large quantities of fish. They're always amazingly hungry and calculating fishermen sometimes exploit them, having them catch fish for commercial purposes. A large band is placed around the neck so that they can't swallow. Boy, will he need bike crap and have them look it up in the dictionary. A combination of Frankenstein and a house detective. He's sneaking up on you. One of the most primitive of animals is the sloth, which obviously gets named from its extreme branches back downward, and they're just as stubborn as they are slothful. Their four limbs are provided with long, curved claws, so that with their sharp teeth, they really have five weapons of defense. He looks like a cross between a monkey and a bear. 
Without the aid of a stick, it would be impossible for two men to dislodge one from a tree. Plenty nasty to play around with. This sloth has the reputation of being the stupidest animal the creator ever made. Poor fellow, he hasn't strength enough in his legs to support his weight. He has to lie down and pull himself along the bushes and tufts of grass. Darwin repeatedly referred to another variety of this tropical animal has three. After a half day's work subduing this little playmate, his captors are plenty exhausted, and so is he. The variety of tropical lizard is the iguana. This one is a rock iguana. The more familiar species is the free-living animal pictured here. Its chief means of defense is its long tail. While it doesn't eat meat, living entirely on birds' eggs, plants, and herbs, the iguana is much desired by natives as food and is attacked by carnivorous or meat-eating animals. They frequently, under stress of great excitement and conflict, lose their tails. But the iguana has the rather unique faculty of growing a new tail. That isn't a snake, but the wiggling of the iguana's tail. A natural enemy of the iguana is the vulture. And now for some excitement. No love lost on either side. The animal world is full of bitter, desperate animosities such as these. The slow-moving iguana absorbs some fearful punishment, waiting for an opportunity to get a desperate hold on the vulture. Now the kind of struggle that makes nature seem cruel indeed. The vulture escapes, but that doesn't mean the iguana's troubles are over, for the puma, an even more dangerous natural enemy, appears. A much-feared mountain lion, long-limbed, stealthy, very careful to keep out of the way of that whip-like tail. The puma, the very last word in animal cunning, skillful and relentless fighter of the jungle, cleverly stalks his prey. The lightning-like movement he strikes, the instant basic and eternal law, the save of the fittest. 